This playthrough is rated E for everyone. <laughs> well, everyone's in love, but for the for us, we have to learn about the duality of man, the hypothetical, the metaphysical, and well, I don't think a game really can handle stuff like this without being comical. Greetings and salutations, viewers. Of Vanova here with the finale of Goblins Three. In the last episode, we dealt with the mirror maze and what's inside our brain. So now we dealt with the thinking puzzles and all that. Now we have to deal with the morality, I guess. So this is the final stage of the game. Not super difficult for the most part, mainly because this is the only screen left. And we have no companions. It's just wear blount for whatever reason. And, uh, you know, um, our snake ran off to find another lady snake. Hmm, seems like a lot of people are getting together in this game. Can Blount find the same bit of love from Winona? Where is she anyway? So, But anyway, uh, we, all we know is that she was going to be released by the king and the queen was going to restore her after all this is done so hopefully they follow through with that but let's read the last well technically not the last news there's one last bit of news in the finale like when we get to the credits well technically there were already credits at the beginning of the game so there's not like a credit scroll after the game ends there's like a few vignette scenes in the end so but anyway the one of the final gobble news king anglifer offers a reward for any word regarding his son who's disappeared the gods fell on their heads. I'm at the center of the conflict that opposes Xena and Bod. Each kingdom represents the rift of their divinity. I know now why I have been directed to solve all this. It was written. It was my destiny. You know, showing Bod and Xena just staring at us, and we've kind of we kind of accepted ourselves. That's why we're at Wereblunt right now because of what happened in the last episode. We've uh, controlled the demon, as it were. But yeah, so we got to put this all together by figuring this out. So let's look at the last aim of the screen. All the way in the corner there. We started way back at the beginning on an airship with a weird parrot thing. And now we're dealing with the good and evil and morality and all this other stuff. A weird world, really. Where Blount must reconcile the two poles of the divinity by having the angel and demon play the sacred score at the same time. Man, the sacred score it must sound great for being a score, right? Of two different opposing sides, angel and demon. Angel with the classical music and demon with like more, you know, hard rock, heavy metal type of situation. It's got to sound great. I can't wait to figure this out. So let's take a look around. A desk? Well, that's not a desk. Okay. <laughs> but uh, that's not a desk. It's a, uh, no, I forgot what they call it, but it's one of those things where you put uh, musical notes on a music stand or whatever. Before the disunity, he played the sacred music. The good old times. Just put it just put the old record on the shelf. I don't uh, 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 by myself. This new music ain't got the same soul. I like that old time rock and roll. Yeah, pretty much. He has hit bottom and is forced to beg. An angel has to beg for coins? That's a strange thing. Hmm. Oh, what's this, a bell? What does this do? <laughs> it looks like Blount's gloved hand over there. Hmm. Well, let's see what that's all about. It looks like a fence was preventing him from getting out. Uh, okay. I don't know why that's so funny, Blount, but all right. But anyway, let's release this hand. Yeah, all you have to do is just hit it with an axe, and that's pretty much it, so. All right, well, we got a spring of bitterness, huh? Let's see what that does. If we click on it. Here is the spring of bitterness. The separated divinities weep from rage. They don't look like they're mad, but you know, it looks like he's got a some music in his hand or something like that, or a note, I'm not sure. Let's uh, talk to these guys and see what they... Maybe they can give us some clues of what to do. Before the disunity, only one musician played the sacred music. Oh, hmm. So we gotta find a way to play the sacred music, so yeah, let's drop something. The yarn of time. Alright. 
You picked up a yarn, a wear blount. You don't, you don't think too highly of yourself for that. <laughs> Just something about the silliness of it. All right. Oh, there's a bell on this side as well. What does this do? I assume the same thing. What the? It's a different colored hand. Kind of looks like wear blount's hand. Hmm. How can we release him from his thing? Well, if a if an axle work on a wood fence, why not a hammer on a on a wall? As simple as that. But I wonder what those things do if we do it, uh, if we press them. Well, we'll figure that out in a second. Let's talk to the dec a decadent demon, huh? I'm a freaking demon. Before the big rift, he used to play the sacred music. That was beautiful. Oh man, I can't wait to hear this song whenever we finish this. Yeah, I don't know why he does that when he when you click on this stuff, but uh, oh, cloud, huh? That's a cloud loaded with electricity. Hmm. Wait, isn't that thing the the demon is standing on? Doesn't that look like an amp? Hmm. I wonder. Well then. All right. Let's see what the negative side a pole of divinity has to say. Before the great rift. The two poles were united in the same being. Huh. Okay. All right. Well, let's uh, get to solving this then. This one, like I said, this one's a pretty easy one. It's pretty quick to get through too. So I think it's fine after after the. I mean, guess in hindsight, the mirror level wasn't that bad. It just as when I was younger, I seemed to have trouble with that level for some reason. Anyway, let's press this bell here. Oh. Okay. It's trying to pull on that chain. And it's not going to do it by itself. Well, what if we push the other bell over here? See what happens. Perhaps working together? Oh. And they're pulling on this chain that unlocked this basin, whatever. I wonder what happens if we stand on it. Oh. Oh, wow. And jump on that made the uh, divinity drop. What's this? All right, let's drop this in here. What's this? It is the sacred score. No. Yeah, I don't know why the sound effect. He basically said something and howled. Obviously, it wasn't anything important because he didn't talk. But, you know, I don't know why that cuts out. But anyway, we need to... Uh, some of the stuff isn't quite obvious, but we're trying to get this these two to work together so let's throw the uh score in the uh, uh song a bit uh the um, spring here Boo. Boo. i'm not sure how you're supposed to know to do that but uh that's what we have to do so anyway let's uh hit this bell again and drain the water and we have to do it for both sides again every time all right let's move over here and have the uh, water get uh, pooled again, just like pulling the the you know plug in a bathtub, you know, same thing. All right, so jumping on the chain this time. Let's actually check the basin. All right. Now what do we got? Now we've got uh, two different scores. No, I think it's just got to do the same thing. <clears throat> well, one is basically, as you can tell, color coded. So one's for the light side and one's for or the angel, one's for the devil. So let's drop the yellow score on the desk there or the music stand. I don't know why they call it a desk. I think it's a translation issue. All right. <clears throat> Put that one there. Put the uh Put the red score there. That way they have the the song they can play now that we've got the uh <clears throat> two uh two different musical notes because we're trying to get these guys to work together so all right now after this is the well this is the final set of uh, sequences to get the song to play so all you have to do is you have to do these pr uh, back to back um they give you a few seconds obviously to um get this stuff but you want to do this as you know uh quick together as you can 
So first we want to drop the coin into the halo here because he talked about how he's begging for for change or whatever, so. All right, now that that note's there, now we need to create the other note. So we need to go over to the cloud here and remember how the description of the cloud said it was a uh, produced electricity or filled with electricity. Well, we need to start the demon up, so we need to have him uh, have his amp working because apparently it's not working or something like that. All right, now we need to tie these two notes together. And finally, uh, after that, we need to summon the two hands again to uh, work together on this. So, yeah, like a little veil. All right, after I press these two bells, we'll hear the, the greatest song in history, and we'll start off the end of the game. And I'll talk about the... Uh... Yeah, it's, now it's just standing there. It's not going to pull the chain. But anyway, I'll press this final button, and let's hear it. Oh, this is going to be a song for the ages, viewers. Be sure to pull out your, your phones and record this posterity for the rest of your days. It's going to sound awesome, I promise. Blount had rejected his painful past as a prince to become an anonymous reporter. Since he had found peace and love again, he was able to go back to his father's. And uh, by the way, if you if you don't press anything, that, that scene will keep playing over and over and over again. And yeah, I probably boasted the fact that it sounded great, and obviously the joke was it sounded that didn't sound that great, but it didn't sound as bad in retrospect, but it's not good either for being this this harmon harmonious action between a, a harp and a and a guitar but anyway we get the final goblin news of the game drank fully under water and serenity will enter your hearts forever the wedding of the century thanks to the insight of our reporter the conflict between zing and bod ends up happily or zina and bod ends up happily incredible blount is actually king anglifer's son whose childhood had been troubled by being kidnapped by a demon so yeah it sets up um, yeah, it sets up from what happened in number two and also talks about what happened in number one. And uh, Zena and Bod apparently had a thing for each other. They got together at the end. You know, good thing we got to steal that kiss as Wereblant from Zena before this all happened. So, And that's it for the game. Uh, after that, it's a, a series of vignettes talking about showing stuff from the, the previous games and Blount kind of looking on. And it has a final scene of of just true romance where just... Uh, you know, everyone gets together with someone, and I think that's the the whole point of this game. I think, um, and I'll talk. About, I'll basically just do up my review now because uh, after that the game uh, just auto closes after the last bit of credit. So I'll talk about it now. But overall, I really enjoyed this game. I I forgot how much I enjoyed this after a while, and I was saying two is my favorite, but now I think it's three just because of just uh, the humor in it. Blonde has a bit more of a personality. I mean, Wingus and Fingus still did, but you know, just. And they were able to utilize all these different companions to help you on your journey. Unfortunately, you don't get them for too long, and there's not much to them outside of a certain point. And some characters just kind of disappear from the plot. And it's not like you need an explanation of everything. And this is back in the days of, was it 1993 or 94 or something like that? So you can kind of expect they can't tell all the stories. And the game, when you get to the end of the credits, it kind of just ends. Like, there's no final extra scene with Winona after all this. I mean, there is, but there's no, like, oh, they meet together and talk about stuff and then something happens it just kind of ends so that's kind of a little disappointing there but at least we get the scene where we get to play her and by herself just to kind of her doing some puzzle solving i kind of wish there was a bit more of her in the game but i understand why it's blind story not hers overall and i do like the tie-ins that they tied the other games in the series into this and the twist that you find out that blount is actually the the buffoon prince from the se from the second game is a nice little nice little touch and they explain why he kind of did what he did because he'd been traumatized because of being kidnapped by a demon and all this other stuff surprise surprise um and i don't know i just like the the music in the game the the puzzles were fun and different except for a few frustrating parts and uh but a lot of different locales 
the game giving you plenty of hints to figure out the stuff even without the jokers it was pretty ridiculous i forgot how i wouldn't say easy the game was but how many chances the game gave you to like solve the puzzles even straight up telling you what you were supposed to do to solve the the map you know it's better than a lot of old point and click adventures games back in the day sometimes they didn't give you any clues you just kind of had to mess around until you figured it out um which i don't mind that but nowadays you it's nice to have a little bit of a gist of like what your general objective is and then trying to get to that objective and uh I don't know. I, I like the Goblins trilogy overall, and it was a nice change of pace from other point-and-click adventure games because this is based. This is from an Eastern, a French studio, so you get a bit of different idea of what they consider entertaining or funny or what type of stories they were trying to tell. And you know, I play a lot of Western-style games from like America and stuff like that or Japan, so you know, it's kind of nice to see something from a different era of the world, like I said, France or some games that are like a lot of polish games are popular now and i've heard recently a lot of south american games are becoming popular like i played a, a chroma squad which that was a south american uh studio that made that if i remember correctly but uh but yeah overall um goblin series is a, a blast and i think the goblin series overall is pretty good obviously in the end i guess three probably is my favorite then goes with second and one the first game and the only problem i had with the first game is that the game didn't uh punish you for trying just messing around a bit because of the health bar system even though you could just type up the code and just reset it but i wish they let you mess around a bit more uh and then uh, to solve before solving puzzles that's why i like two a bit more than one for example um like i said there is technically another game in the series but it doesn't really it's kind of weird how it works and it was made years later and I don't know if I care to play that one. Maybe I will. I'll look it up again, maybe if I want to. But as is, I think these are all a good separate game series overall, and I really enjoyed them. I hope uh, hope people who watched all three of these, uh, if you did, thanks for watching all three of them, and I hope you went on the journey. If you didn't watch all three and just watched this one, this probably was the best one to watch overall. Um, easier to play as. Got a lot more comedy and jokes and stuff like that going on there. So, but yeah, I'll leave it off there. And, uh, unfortunately i think for cocktail vision i think they only did like a couple more games after this if i remember and then they kind of closed down which is sad to hear I've, i don't i haven't read all the details about it. i just know they didn't make too many games afterwards and it's kind of sad to hear about games that you like and they did the companies that worked on them didn't really do much afterwards i know the guy who did the art for this one did at least the art for another game which i don't think i've ever actually played that one i maybe i did a long time ago but maybe i'll play that one somewhere down the line if we want to get back to it but as is I think we'll set it up there. So, all right. Well, I'm going to press the space bar and let it get to the last vignette. And, uh, well, thanks for watching. Hope you had a good, uh, uh <clears throat> hope you enjoyed uh, watching the game and, uh, and just leave off on the final message of this game is love is everywhere and you can end up finding it no matter what you do, even if you don't really even try, but with Blount, he tried and he did succeed and went back to his father and found everything that he needed in this whole journey, just by getting cursed by, a you know, a werewolf and all this other stuff. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next game. Oh, Bobo, Big
Pas beau, pas beau, pas beau.